Aloha from Ireland and welcome to This Much Is True. It is true indeed that I haven't been around as much as I used to be. Why is that? Because I'm busy and like you, I too am enjoying the bit of sun that we have. We had a lot of sun today, which is Monday 27th of May 2K24. Just under a month's time, if the Lord spares me, I will be the big 61 years of age. No turning back now, well and truly into the 60s. How's it going in your neck of the woods? Any news from you? If so, please share. You know the usual places, don't you? Make a note of this one. Here's an email address. This much is true at protonmail.com. If you want to put a little comment down below as well, fair enough, you can go that route. So yeah, it's been, it was really nice today. It was a scorcher and uh, I got myself out to the sun. I've cut down. Um, I've cut down on the booze as well. I'm not a drinker, drinker, but about three days each week, I'll have one or two, as a treat. Sometimes three glasses of red. But no, I, I decided to just go kind of cold turkey. I got fed up with kind of supping, supping at it. I thought to, m I thought to myself, God, I feel sometimes like an, a, like I'm a tramp around an old heated barrel, poking it with a stick and having a sup. So I got disgusted with myself and I decided I'm going to go cold turkey until I get away, please the Lord, in um, next month. I'm popping over to Madrid for a while to meet one of our daughters and myself and my missus will have a few glasses of red then. Yeah, it's just a habit really, isn't it? I mean, I do like it. I love my, I love my wine, but you can get kind of, I won't say dependent on it, but it's like... Oh, never mind. I've gone cold turkey on it and a weekend I'm feeling so much better as a result, getting out, getting my walks, etc. Keep moving, folks. That's what I'd say to you. Keep moving. Um, today's show is going to be shortish and sweetish and it concerns the subject of kind of karma, if you like, or, you know, that kind of, yeah, you got, you got what was coming to you. We'll have a few of those kinds of stories, if that's okay. By you. Now that we're all lined up on the runway, before I go anywhere, I'd like to just recall to mind my late father, uh, Colonel Manning, Colonel Jerry Manning. Uh, just really quickly, his anniversary was, was, his 10th anniversary was only a few days back, but there's not a day goes by I don't think about him. He was a wonderful role model. He was a total gentleman. I never really heard him swear. He didn't drink. He'd have a social drink. He hadn't smoked in years. I think everybody smoked when he was young. And he just said to me, oh, in my 30s, it, he was very kind of country, you know. Oh, in my 30s, I gave him up. Too bloody expensive, you know. He was like that. And um, I was talking to him one day with my late mum as well, uh, Emily S2 you know, what he was like, because he was very devout in his religion, but it was the best kind of devout Catholicism or Christianity. He didn't really push it on anybody at all. He just was, so you saw by his example, he had a very strong faith. And he was a young army officer down in the Curra in Kildare. It's famous for its race course and its breeding of horses. Um, you wouldn't like to know that in Cheltenham, but most people... Um, that go over there, go over and see Irish horses, race horses, win races. And uh, he was stationed down there and he was minding his own business one day, digging his wee garden. And uh, a member of the clergy came along and that was a time, it was a very different time. It was when little men sometimes with a very small collar on them thought that they were big men. They had ideas about themselves and they were respected by everybody and, and often feared by the populace. So daddy was going about his thing and this pup of a priest, to put it like that, looked over the fence and said, hey you, uh, what's your name? And he, he said to him, I don't know, Captain Manning. Yeah, well, you, you know, you're Jews. You're, these were the, you know, the donation. Some of them are called tithes as well. Do you ever hear that expression? Probably um, in other denominations. But you're, you, your church Jews are, are Jew. Why aren't you paying them? And he said, uh, sorry, now he liked priests, you know. 
He said, sorry, Father, sorry. Why, why aren't your mass dues? Uh, yeah, yeah, we haven't received anything. And he said, sorry, Father, I do pay my uh, mass dues, but I pay them to the garrison church. I'm an army officer. I don't pay them to your church. And he went on about it. Anyway, how's it going, Father? Well, I'm telling you now, that's going to change and all the rest of it. I, I, I'm looking for your dues. He said, listen, I don't know which part you don't understand. You know, I pay them and I pay them to the garrison church. Okay? Well, it's not okay. Blah, 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 blah. I'm going to tell the bishop, your man said. And my dad's retort to him was, go ahead, fuck off out of my garden. He said, well, I don't think that would even use that language. But that was his attitude. Get the hell out down the road, he said. And you can tell the Pope while you're at it. So, you know, one for you, Dad. Now, okay. If you behave like a tyrant, someday you're going to come across a bigger tyrant. And that phrase belongs to my mum. So here's a, here's a quick story for you. I'm going to have two of these type of sto- stories for you today. The last one is kind of similar to the first thing I just said to you. While I just change my computer here. And um, it concerns more recent times. Well, I'm talking maybe 15 years ago or so. I went to check into hospital for whatever reason. Ingrown toenail, I don't know what it was. But I was sitting in the kind of, you know, the little cubicle areas. A triage type place. And uh, there was a partition in front of me. And I could hear this ruckus going on. And I apologise for our international listeners. But there's a, there's a type of rough character here. Sometimes they're called a, a howia or a scumbag, right? They're generally very loud and very aggressive. Um, you, you get the, you know, the kind of bums that you get in every country who thinks the world revolves around them and the way to get anything is to be aggressive and bullying. So I heard this. Where's the fucking doctor? Beep, beep, beep. Where the, where the hell is he? I've been waiting here around 20 minutes. Most of us have been probably waiting a few hours at this stage. Jesus, where is he? Where is he? So every so often a member of staff would try and pacify him like a little intern would come along and said, Oh, the doctor, he will be with you shortly. Just can you please be a bit more patient? Pardon the pun. Listen, you. Get out of me fucking way, Abdul. I'll turn your head into a bleeding canoe. Oh, this was going on. Even the women weren't spared. Nice little nurses. Hey, it's okay. Can you just just keep your voice down? I won't keep my fucking voice down. I want to see the goddamn doctor. I want to bleed and see him now. Jesus Christ, I haven't got all day to be sitting around here. And it went on and it went on and it went on. But then he was about to meet someone. His nemesis. The worst kind of tyrant you can have. An educated one. And one with plums in his mouth. So even though I couldn't see... I could hear what happened next. It was Mr. Murphy. Yeah, thanks very much. Yeah, it's a bit late in the, in the day now. But anyway, I've got this. Hold on, Mr. Murphy. Can we get things straight here? What are you on about? Just get me, start, sort me out here, will you? No, no, no. Button it. I'm telling you now, you have been harassing my staff. Oh, fuck off. Jeez. You have been. I wasn't. You have. You have been loud and boorish, and you are a fermenting can of Javanese warthog spittle as far as I'm concerned. You will get treated when everybody else gets treated. But I suppose you've made such a mess and a fuss that you want to talk to me now. Is that the story? Well, I was, uh, you know, I was just thinking now. Well, hold on a second. You were harassing my staff. Acknowledge that. Well, I had a few words with them, so I was going to you know, sorry, <laughs> you know. No, listen to me. Do you want me to treat you? What? Do you want me to treat you? I've just come in off a 15-hour stint. I am run off my feet and I have to sit here and listen to you. Do you want me to treat you? <laughs> it went silent. And in a small voice, Mr. Murphy said, yeah, yeah, I'd like you to treat me. Okay, then. So, 
What's the problem? Eh? Uh, we can't make love to me wife. It does you good to be humbled once in a while. Now, that's all that happened, but that did happen. That actually happened. And I sat there behind the screen, laughing my head off. What a come down. Imagine the humiliation of that. He's shouting around like he is the big, like he's Hitler, giving it the big I am. And suddenly he has to admit to a very, very personal, intimate problem. He can't make love to his wife. And finally, back to the clergy and a little bit of history. So my mother, my late mother, Emily, grew up like most of her generation when times were very hard. It was in the Depression in the 1930s. And again, the clergy ruled with an iron rod. And they were respected, and it was yes, sir, yes, father, no, father, three bags full, father. So, one day a priest walked into the classroom, my mother's classroom, and all the kids were pretty much, they were some well off, but most of them were in abject poverty. And the priest says, I'm looking, well, let's do an Irish accent. I'm looking for Nan. Where is Nan? So this little girl stands up. And before she even takes into account, you know, really his presence or what he wants, he opened her face with the back of his hand. And again, back and forth, he slapped her silly. And she was ugh, distraught is not the word. She had been assaulted, essentially. So she's crying her eyes out crying her eyes out and he looks at her and he says on the pew in the church you little bitch you carved your name Nan you carved it with a bloody I, I'm going to talk to your father a bloody penknife or something you scratch your name Nan into the pew and she's screaming and she's crying and she's in bits and of course my mother went home and uh, you know related what happened and Everyone was, of course, back then, you know, if you got a slap off a teacher uh, or a Christian brother or a nun, you know, sometimes the attitude was you must have bloody well asked for it. But anyway, a, a couple of days went by and the priest was out and about. As usual, everybody was cowtown to him out in the middle of town. And this likely lad comes over to him, young man. And he said, uh, Father, yes, my son. Well now, Father, he says, do you know a young girl called Nan? The priest thought from, from, to himself for a minute or two and went, Nan, yes, a young, a young lass. She's, she's about 14 years of age. Penny starts dropping into priest. Uh, yeah, yes, I, yes, son, I, I do. I believe, um, you... You slapped her in the class the other day. Well, yes, I did, because, you know, she was, uh, she, she was a proud soul and she scratched her name into the pew in the church. And you can't have that kind of thing. And the young man just looked at him. And he said, so you think it was Nan, do you, did that? The priest says, aye, it was. And the young man looked him in the eye and said, think again, father because it was me. Take your jacket off. Well, in typical quiet man, 1950s Irish style, they went at it. Except, to put it in quite vulgar terms, the priest had the shit kicked out of him. And rightly so. And so ended, my darling brethren, the tales of if you behave like a tyrant... Someday you're going to come across a bigger tyrant. And justice was done, and instant karma. John Lennon would have been proud of it. Have you any comments to make? You know, do you want to talk to me? Please do. I can't keep this thing going without content. It would be lovely to hear from you. There's stuff happening in the world, but there's probably more important there's stuff happening in your world, in your, in your life. Perhaps you'd like to share or have a funny story, whatever it may be. How about emailing? This much is true at protonmail.com. 
Of course, you can do the comments below as well. But I like the old email because I can give it a good bit of attention before I pop on here. I, I read through it. It's totally safe, by the way. Uh, totally safe. In fact, it's very secure. Very secure. This much is true at protonmail.com. Arriva Dirce. Isn't that what I say? Oh, we could say it in Irish. Uh, Slán, August Turara Detain. Goodbye and look after yourself. From yourself, Mark Manning, take care because I care.